Okay, this is really cool. I have been a fan, despite not having seen a lot of them, I've been a fan of old time movie serials since I was a kid. My father uh, grew up in the, born in the late 30s, so grew up in the 40s, 50s, would tell me about, he, I would thrill as a little kid to his tales of what it was like going to the movies when he was a kid in the 40s and how much you would get for that nickel or that quarter. And it was, part of it was movie serials. And I was always fascinated by that. I'd read about it, but I never saw them. And it wasn't until there was a show on PBS in the 80s called Matinee at the Bijou where they would try to recreate what it was like going to the movies in the 30s or 40s where you would get your trailers and your newsreels, your comedy shorts, your serials, and your feature or two that I finally got to see some of these. And eventually some would come out on videotape. They've been available for years. I've just never pursued them because they were always a lot. It was always a two tape set or a two disc set or whatever. Well now, VCI Entertainment has released the original, I believe it was 1940, serial of The Green Hornet. Green Hornet started off as a radio serial character, you know, crime fighter, mass crime fighter. Britt Reed was this news, wealthy newspaper reporter or newspaper publisher who decided to fight crime. He would go out at night with uh, a mask and uh, his special, uh, at least in the, in, I don't know the radio serial, but at least in these serials, uh, film serials, it was a uh, gas gun that would knock people out. So it was non-lethal and it, it would shoot little gas cartridges that the guys would drop to the floor. And he had a special car called the uh, Black Beauty that made this buzzing sound like a hornet buzzing. And his faithful companion, Kato, who was, I guess, originally uh, Japanese, it was a Asian, Asian character that ultimately was changed to be a Korean character because as the years went on and we got into World War II, uh, not everybody was loving the Japanese at the time, so that happened. So uh, Kato was his like his valet or his butler or what have you, who would be his crime fighting partner at night. So uh, that was turned into this serial that we're talking about here. So it is a 13 chapter serial. If you don't know what movie serials are, if I'm sorry if I didn't explain that and you don't know, it was, uh, they also called them cliffhangers. You would have a story and it would be, they would usually be about the length of a film short. It's like 20 minutes or so. And at the end, our hero would be in grave peril. And you would see him essentially get killed. Not on camera, but he'd be in a, in a train car and they'd be like, oh no, we've run out of track. And they would cut to the train going off the track and exploding. And then it would say, come back next week for the next exciting chapter and see if he survived. Now, if you're really, really savvy, you're like, well, I don't know how this series is going to go with the hero being dead. And the next chapter would show you how at the last minute, they talk about this in Misery, the Annie Wilkes character in Misery in the book and the film gets into this using a very silly made up profanity word. Uh, they would show you at the beginning of the next chapter how the hero escaped death the very last second and then you would, the story would continue. Uh, serial in that not serial, but serialized, meaning it was a story told over many, many weeks. And the idea with this was that you'd have to come back to the theater to see how it, how it ended. It was a totally a ploy to get you, much in the way radio was. You come back every week and you know, you're gonna hear that sponsor message and hopefully you'll buy some of that oatmeal or whatever and you'll get to your next exciting chapter. Well, for the movies, that's what this did. So these were in the theater. They, they play like a TV show now when you watch them because of the length of a half hour show and it's you know an ongoing series. But the idea was that you would go to see whatever. You'd go to see Buck Privates and before that there'd be some radio serial uh, some movie serial, and you'd be like, man, I want to see how that ends. I'm going to come back next week. I don't care what the main features. I'm coming back next week. And they would theoretically hook you to come back again and again. I was very, very lucky in that near where I lived for a long time, the, the New Falls Cinema in Bellows Falls, Vermont, had a collection. They either rented them or they had some of uh, the old Batman serial from the 40s. And they would play those on occasion, on occasion before the movies. And once in a while, they would do like this community day downtown where all day they would just play them. And it was so cool for me. It was like me and two other people in the theater, but it was so thrilling for me to be able to actually see a movie serial in the theater. So it is exciting to me. Let's actually talk about this release five minutes in. It's exciting to me that VCI has put this out on Blu-ray. The transfer looks fantastic. The... Uh, there's a couple instances, they'll, and they'll tell you right up front where the second they couldn't locate the second reel of the film, so they're working from a lesser source, and it looks like it comes from a videotape. But for the most part, these look really good, and they're a lot of fun. They don't waste a lot of time. They do play like a like a TV show. It's like a crime fighting TV show. You've got your Green Hornet. You've got your Kato portrayed by Key Luke, who was number one son in the Charlie Chan films, and also went on to be the old man who sells Mr. Peltzer the Mogwai at the beginning of Gremlins and um, 
it's just, you see some other familiar bit player faces, no, no names that I come to mind really offhand, but there's some fam people I know from 40s movies and, and they're just fun. It's, it's every week it's busting up a racket, some kind of span over two episodes, but it's, it's basically what the radio show was. It is the Green Hornet versus the Syndicate. So the, the syndicate is, they got a finger in every pie. They're, they're, they're pulling the strings, they're puppet masters. They're trying to, you know, get a little graft off everything. And it's about, you know, the parking lot racket. People skimming out a parking lot or, or using a parking lot like a chop shop. It's about uh, chicanery at a circus. Uh, get a nice circus fire. There's, um, you get chicanery in mines, flight schools, uh, busing lines, and the aforementioned parking lot. So you get 13 instances of syndicate chicanery in this. And uh, it's just fun. It's really good use of miniatures, fun use of miniatures, fun uh, moments of peril and how are they gonna get out of it. Uh, the Green Hornet's mask is very interesting looking, very stiff, straight mask. Apparently I read in all the, there's, there's extras and there's a booklet on here too. Um, apparently the Green Hornet's voice in this, when it's Britt Reed, it's the actor who's playing Britt Reed, but when it's the Green Hornet, it's the voice who did the Green Hornet on the radio show because they felt like the fans would want to hear that. And the guy's face is covered in a mask. You know, you won't really see, you see that his jaw's moving, that's about it. And um, apparently the sound of the car too. Whenever you see the car at night, the, the Black Beauty, it is the sound of the car from the radio show. Radio show which apparently started in Michigan, which was interesting to me. I always presume these big iconic radio series were you know, New York or LA, one of the big places, but actually started at a station in Michigan and then it spread out from there. Um, what else? It is, as I said, 13 chapters. It's divided onto two discs. Disc one is chapters one through eight. Disc two is chapters nine through 13 and some extras. Extras are uh, kind of an odd thing. It's a audio thing. It's a, you get a still and it's called uh, I Am the Green Hornet by Clifford Weimer. And it is essentially, it, it, it purports to be the Green Hornet had written an autobiography and most of it was lost, but only some of it survives. And we're gonna, we're gonna do a reading of this biography. And so it's a dramatic reading of basically Britt Reed telling the story of the character as though it was based on him. It doesn't really work for me, but I would have just preferred a straight, and it's a little written and it's a little weird, but it's, I would have probably preferred just some historian just stating the facts, but you know, it's a little bit of whimsy, a little bit of whimsy from somebody who clearly likes this stuff. You get uh, two episodes of the original radio show. This is really cool. I like old time radio anyway. It's fascinating to step back. I mean, you're you're talking here about an old form of entertainment that doesn't exist anymore, uh, based on an old form of entertainment that doesn't exist anymore, really. I mean, we have podcasts and there are dramatic podcasts, but it's not like it used to be where everybody would tune in to listen to this stuff. So you get two episodes. You get the parking lot racket episodes that were kind of translated into chapters of the serial. Parking Lot Racket from 1939. Run, these run a half hour. No commercials, it's just the original broadcast, but they sound really good. I think it says it credits Radio Spirits, which is one of those companies that has really good copies of these and sells them full series and things like that. The Highway That Graft Wrote. I love old tough guy terminology. I believe at least once in these, somebody is referred to as a mug, and I love that. You mug. Say, say you mug. Uh, I'll, get, I'll cut you out of the loop, see? I love that stuff. Uh, and that's a 1940 radio episode. And then you get a trivia and photo gallery, uh, which is, is basically an auto advance uh, text screens with some unfortunate typos and uh, some music that plays under that. And what's interesting, though, is the text screen clearly was written a long time ago. I don't know if it was written for an earlier DVD release of this stuff or when it was written, but it does refer to the upcoming Green Hornet movie, which came out years ago and tanked hard with Seth Rogen. And at the time, when it was first announced, Stephen Chow was supposed to be the co-star as Cato. That didn't happen. So it, re it references, you know, Seth Rogen and Stephen Chow in this upcoming movie. And I'm like, that upcoming movie was at least a decade ago. And uh, I'll, I'll, let me show you the package. I was actually just reading, pardon my shoulder, I was actually just reading the booklet a second ago. So we have a really nice package, a nice package of, uh, with the old poster art or something that looks a lot like the old poster art and uh, info on the back, and then, I, I really like this release. And then you get the discs, and you've got what I feel like was the 60s TV Green Hornet logo, I'm not sure if that predates that, two Hornet logos, and a reversible cover. Uh, a lot of people get into the reversible covers now, and I always like it with uh, just alternate, alternate artwork. And then you get uh, a nice little booklet 
with more vintage uh, imagery. Ooh. So apparent. okay. We share these moments together. So the back, I, I like VCI. VC VCI has put out a lot of retro stuff for a long time. On the back, they have uh, all the other cereals they sell. And boy, am I excited to see more of these. Dick Tracy, uh, The Green Hornet Strikes Again, I should say, it was a sequel series to these. And what I've read online like this week is that if this does well, if people are made aware of how good this is and how good the quality is and it sells well enough, they will release a Blu-ray version of the sequel to this. Green Hornet is interesting to me in that I always had heard about the TV show, casually mentioned the TV show because Bruce Lee was in it. Most people I think these days, if they know the Green Hornet, it's because Bruce Lee was in the TV show. But I never saw the show. It was produced by the Batman people, feels a lot like the Batman show, minus the over, overarching arch camp aspect to it. But it went so short in terms of its duration of episodes, it never got replayed a lot. So I think the Green Hornet, for the most part, has kind of fallen off the cultural map. And that's too bad because it's fun. These are fun cereals. I don't know how wildly different they are from a lot of other cereals in that there were a lot of cereals about people busting up bad guys and you know, Spy Smasher and Crime Smasher and all that kind of stuff. Dick Tracy versus Crime Incorporated. Dick, Dick Tracy's G-Men. There's Dick Tracy Gangbusters, all this stuff. Green Hornet had a cool mask, cool name, cool car. That made an interesting sound. And then you get uh, a lot of old photos and, um, and it just, it's an interesting overview of, this, of the history of the radio serial, the character, and the, the film series and its production, specifically concentrating on this Green Hornet uh, serial. They'll literally take a little bit about the second one. Um, unfortunately also has some typos, but I overlooked that because it's done with, with the heart and the love. So I really enjoyed this. I really hope VCI puts out more of these. I hope this does well enough to warrant more of these because it's a form of film that's gone. It hasn't been done since I want to say the 50s with film serials and it's really not likely to come back. We do have this kind of storytelling now with TV and all that, but I, a, I love film history. I love old timey stuff. I love it when the quality is really good. It's put out in a respectable package. Film serials have been available on video since the 80s, but a lot of times they just look terrible. And it's great to see these looking good uh, in, in, with you know chapters and all those modern innovations and looking great in HD. So available now from VCI Home Entertainment, The Green Hornet.